Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. When I started this blog and this YouTube channel, I had a plan. I had intended to make regular tutorial videos for you guys, and you've probably noticed I haven't had as many lately. And what happened is actually a few months back, my competition scale Mirage crashed it. And so I've been scrambling trying to get that back together, back repaired. If you saw my Facebook page, I had posted some pictures. Thankfully, it was repairable. And I, I actually took some footage along the way, and I intend to do some tutorials around some of the, the items that I had to rebuild. You can subscribe to get those when they come. Uh, but otherwise, I've got the airplane mostly back together now, about ready to fly. And then I got distracted with this beauty. Uh, this is an ASM Tiger Cat. Uh, it was available from Hobby People a few years ago. Unfortunately, you can't get them anymore. Uh, but if you do see them online, available, it's a beautiful model. It's nice and big. The F7F Tiger Cat, it's got to be one of my favorite multi-engine warbirds. And so since I was putting this together, you know, this is a kit that I've had stored away for a little while. And, you know, we as modelers, we're collectors. We collect things. So I thought I'd use it as an opportunity to uh, talk about setting up a twin or multi-engined electric aircraft. There's definitely some things to consider if you've got a, a multi-engine airplane that you want to electrify. Uh, so I thought I would go through some general rules to think of. I've got a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, also that gets into uh, some of the details of it. Hopefully that'll provide you guys with some valuable information and a really reliable multi-engined uh, electric aircraft. First of all, we've got the airplane, it's multi-engine, we know that we need to come up with a power system. We really got to power it appropriately. The F7F Tiger Cat was a real hot performer, the full size, so I wanted the model to perform, you know, very scale. A while back, I actually wrote an article about sizing an electric propulsion system. Uh, you can see that here, I had a Thunder Tiger Sea Fury that I used a five blader prop for. And I've got multiple tools that I actually run through when I size an electric power system. You've got all of these outrunner motors that are available now and they're all kind of equated to some glow engine, but it's so much less about some equated motor to some glow engine as it is to the motor KV, the prop diameter and the pitch, uh, as well as the number of cells. You have to marriage all of those things together to get a really good propulsive system. Equating them to a glow engine, it gives you a good start, but ultimately you have to prop it right. And that's where these tools come in uh, to help you determine what's really gonna be best. A general rule of thumb when I'm sizing a power system, I look at the pitch speed. If you get 70 miles per hour or more, then you're gonna have a nice performing airplane. If you have a fairly low pitch speed, you might have a lot of thrust, but the airplane's not gonna be moving all that fast. So what I came up with for the Tiger Cat, I eventually converged on two E-Flight Power 110 motors I'm running Castle Creations Edge 100 speed controllers on eight cells running a 15, 13 APC propellers. The power that I get from that is excellent. Since we've got the two controllers, there's some things that we need to think about. If the controllers have BECs in them, you gotta disable them. Run a separate receiver battery. That's actually a general rule that I use for all of my electric aircraft. I don't even bother with the, the UBEC. This is just my personal preference because I want all of that voltage and, and capacity from the batteries going to the propulsion system. The smaller stuff I will run a BEC, but you know, definitely for the high power electrics, run a separate receiver battery. If you don't disable the BEC, you'll end up overloading one controller and then both of the controllers will get super hot. And so it, unfortunately, it's not like running a parallel uh, receiver battery setup or anything like that. So to, to disable, the BEC and the controllers, you simply just remove the red wire from the connector. That's it. Another thing we need to consider, program the controllers. The Castle Creations Edge controllers 
They have their Castle Link, uh, which allows you to program the controllers via a computer. That's definitely the simplest way. Uh, I don't know about other controllers per se, so you know whatever is going to be easiest for you based on what you're using. In terms of the settings themselves, you know if we're using Outrunners, the Castle Creations have an Outrunner mode that you can set up. Uh, most other controllers, I think, will have something to that extent. Depending on the motor that you have. Research the settings that are best for your motor, uh, and most manufacturers should have that. Also, in the programming, we need to make sure that we calibrate the controller to our radio. Now, on the Castle Creations controllers, they have auto calibrate, endpoints, and then the fixed endpoints. For a twin, especially, I highly recommend using fixed endpoints if you're using Castle Creations controller because that allows you to ensure that you're getting the exact same power with the exact same throttle position every flight. I have a link to the instructions on how to do that on my blog article. It's simple and easy to do, highly recommended. I've actually used, been using that on all of my electric aircraft uh, to date because it ensures that for whatever stick position I have in there, I'll get the same result or the same power out of the system. Now once we've got all of that set up, bench test it. Check it out, make sure you don't get anything weird. If everything looks good, then go to a ground test. Uh, run it up to full throttle, make sure everything is in sync. You can adjust the timing slightly to kind of get them in sync, but if you're using the fixed endpoints, you shouldn't have to do that. From there, use a clamp on amp meter to measure the amps, and then you can use those battery cell checkers to check the voltage of the individual cells under load. And from there, you calculate your watts. It's simply the amps times the volts. So once we've ground tested, we're ready to go fly. So when you do, first flight, keep the flight short, three or so minutes. Uh, and then from there, you know, you can start stepping up the flight time. Now those are the main things that we need to think about when we're setting up a multi-engine electric aircraft. I really just wanted to provide a quick discussion for you. If you'd like to see a full video of the Tiger Cat, you can see that here. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found that this helpful. I've got uh, some additional things coming soon. I want to get some more videos for you guys. Mirage is almost uh, fully repaired and I've got some videos coming from that. Also, I've got another uh, free wing jet review and modification video coming. We're going to do a complete transformation on it, so it should be a lot of fun. So be sure to subscribe to get those videos when they're posted. Otherwise, I've got a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, that you can check here that provides all of the links uh, that we've discussed in this video. Again, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you at the field. There's Chris Wolf. Tiger Cat Driver, Green Lantern. <laughs>